Mm. Excellent. Um, so um, I'm supposed to start with the, the brief summary, which is that uh, we went on a canoeing trip and, um, and made some bad choices. And we are now stranded with some broken canoes and 14 items that, um, that we need to rank order to figure out how to get, how to survive. We have, we're 60 miles from the nearest town, which doesn't have a lot of medical help. We are also 15 miles or so from the nearest road, which may or may not ever get traffic. Hello, John. And um, does anyone add it, want to add anything else to the, the synopsis there? It's okay. I only blame Zach a little bit for getting us in trouble. It's fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sure he's the one that talked us into to riding the rapids. <laughs> he talked us into it. I encouraged it. It's not a problem. <laughs> All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, go over what what Ben sent because he can't be here. And it's not on that. And it is on that. Okay. And so Ben said, so, so his idea is that um, the first that he first focused on getting water and direction and then food, the rest, he said, the rest I weighed by usefulness. I didn't feel wet clothes would help. So they were very low on the list. And um, he, he said his very first priority is the duct tape. No, I'm sorry. Water pur purification is number one, followed by the plastic covered map of the region is two. Three is the fanny pack of food. Four is the whiskey. Five matches, six parachute cord, seven compass, eight the sleeping bags, nine is the duct tape, ten is insect repellent, eleven is the the life jackets, twelve the fishing poles, thirteen the clothing, fourteen the frisbee. Okay. Uh, and he's not here to answer any questions or defend his reasons. So who would like to go next? I can. Oh, go ahead, Zach. You go. Okay. Yeah, I can go because I'm pretty sure I'm going to kill us all. And it'll be my fault. So I put the whiskey, obviously, first. I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I put the... Um, I put the matches first because I think it's important to get dry. I think if you're wet the whole time, you're going to be miserable, and that can lead to some problems. Second, I put the food just for the nutrients. Um, third, I put the water purification tablets. Fourth, I put the plastic-covered map. And then to go along with that fifth, I put the compass. Six, I put um, insect repellents. Seventh, I put sleeping bags. Eighth, I put um, parachute cord, just in case we were trying to um, fix up the canoes, I guess. Ninth, I put the yellow frisbee just because of the visibility of it. Tenth, I put duct tape. Um, 11th, I put the whiskey. 12th, I put, um, the clothes, just because I figure if we already have fire, we can dry off the clothes. Um, 13th, I put, um, the fishing poles. And then 14th, I put the flotation devices. That's the one I really wasn't sure about. 
just because I feel like that's just, if we can't fix the canoe, that's just a lot of extra weight to be carrying around, but I could be wrong. I like it. Um, so the first thing that I put was the matches. Uh, because we're all cold and it's and we're all wet and it's cold, so we're now all in danger of hypothermia. So that's got to be our first thing. Because if we're freezing to death, then that doesn't do us any good. Um, second was water purification, and that's just like I don't know. Anytime I spend time outdoors, I'm always I know where my water's at. Um, you can go days without food, weeks even, but water is is key. And I didn't know if we're gonna have anything to boil water in, so um third is parachute cord i said that because we need to make a shelter for the rain um yeah, otherwise we're never going to be able to dry out we're never going to be able to warm up and so then we're just always going to be in danger um fourth is the compass fifth is the map and those are interchangeable for me but we need to know where we're at at least um sixth was the sleeping bags and again that's just for for people with shock or um, hypothermic conditions, like we've got to just take care of that. It's especially in this region and where temperatures can get down to 25 degrees. That's critical. Um, seven is duct tape. I would probably, I don't know. I've never had good, I live in Washington, so I spent a lot of time in the rain and I've never had good luck with wet duct tape. So I, I would probably even drop that lower, but it's not really useful for anything. Um, I mean, we can maybe make some splints out of it if we needed to. Um, eight was the two fishing poles because that would, even though they're broken, we could still use the fishing line on there to get, um, food. Nine was the set of clothes, the three of them that are wet. Like Zach said, we could dry them out and, um, kind of use those. Ten was the whiskey and that was to treat the wounds. None of them sounded life threatening or anything like that. So I wasn't too worried about getting those treated fast. Um, but if we could get some kind of antiseptic on there, that would help with infection. Um, 11 was the fanny pack. Like I said, you can just go a while, a while without food. We won't be comfortable and you might get kind of hangry, but, um, 12 was the personal flotation devices because at that point I just want to burn the kayak or the canoes. Um, 13 was insect repellent cause that's just a luxury. And 14 was the yellow Frisbee, um, because we could use fire and other things for a signal for rescue. Um, but a yellow frisbee would be nice to stick out, but it's not necessary. All right. Um, so for mine, I actually had whiskey as number one, um, just because because of several reasons. So I I had heard that you can use it um, that it's good for like emergencies. Um, and so I wasn't hundred percent sure. So I looked into it more. Um, and so whiskey is combustible. So it can be used as like a, um, a fire starter, um, to help get, um, fuel for a fire. It also kills bacteria and odors. So it works as like a water purification. Um, <clears throat> and so that's really the reason why I put it number one. Um, because, Basically, basically because of water purification, um, but it also you can use it as like, um, like it repels bugs, um, and so so there are a lot of different uses for it, and because it kills bacteria and stuff, I guess you could put it on wounds or anything like that. Um, and then number two, I put water purification tablets. So the first two kind of relating to water because that's I feel like the most important thing at this point because you have so far to go. Um, <clears throat> number three, I put the food, um, and number four, I put sleeping bags, um, just, uh, just for warmth because it, it kind of sounds like, I mean, you could seriously die of hypothermia here. Um, so I think it's important to stay warm. Um, number five, I put the, the map, um, so that you can kind of know which direction to get out. Um, six, the flotation devices, just because how much water there is, you, you're going to have to cross it. Um, seven, I put duct tape, eight matches, nine parachute cord, um, 10 insect repellent, 
Um, 11, I put the compass. I put the compass low just because I feel like if you have a map, I mean, you can you can find ways of orientating yourself. But, I mean, you know the sun, where the sun rises and sets, east and west. You know, like, you can see bodies of water, things like that. So, I don't know. The compass, I feel like, is important, but you could still kind of orient yourself without it. Um, 12, 12, 13, and 14, I just put and ran, like, I didn't know what order to put them in. I just didn't think they were useful. 12 is the set of wet clothes, 13 is the frisbee, and 14 is the two broken fishing poles. Because I don't feel like any of those three are really useful at all. So, yeah, that's, that's my order. Very good. I'll do mine and then we'll read Tish as if she's not back. All right, so first I put the matches for the same reason that, that we need to be able to, to be dry and warm. Second, I put the water purification tablets, same reason that um, we need to be able to drink water. And I realize that it's gonna, it may rain and we may be able to get water from the sky, but it won't be enough water. Number three, I put the yellow Frisbee because we need something to put water in to purify, and I didn't see any containers for those tablets to take effect. Um, unless we drank all the whiskey and used the bottle, um, but that didn't make sense to, to like throw the whiskey out just for the bottle. Fourth, I put the fanny pack of food because I personally like food, and it gives you energy for, for what's gonna happen. Um, Fifth, I put the duct tape. I didn't think about it being wet duct tape, but um, if there's a chance that we can repair the, um, the canoe or, um, and duct tape could also help to uh, possibly um, fix that broken leg, you know, to splint the broken leg. I thought about splinting it with the, with the fishing rods, but I figured we can get any old tree branch and, Anyway, so duct tape was five, and six is the parachute cord, because ropes are very useful. Um, uh, it can, you know, we can make a shelter with, with the ropes. We can, um, uh, we can also tie, tie people together. <laughs> um, seven, I put the whiskey. Um, for one thing, it would it it would also aid in keeping keeping the body warm. Um, not that I know that personally, but from what I've read, um, number eight is the six sleeping bags, which can be used to make like a tent shelter with the um, with the rope. Um, and nine is the compass in the event that we do try to find our way out. And 10 is the map of, of the region. I do think that you need both of them, um, especially, see, in, in living, um, I was raised in Nevada and I live in Colorado, so you can kind of like look up and you see the mountains and you can orient yourself. But, but when we lived in Virginia and some of the other places we've lived that don't have mountains, um, um, it really is hard to tell which direction you're you're going or facing when, especially if there's a lot of trees, which Minnesota has a lot of, and Minnesota has a lot, a lot of lakes. So um, it would be very difficult to figure out which water, which body of water you're at. Um, so I think you need both of those. Um, number eleven, I did the the life jackets because. Um, because there is so much water there, there's a very good chance that if we do go for help, we are going to have to um, ford some rivers. And um, those would just give us the confidence we need to get across them. 12 is the insect repellent because I read Hatchet by Gary Paulson and, and that kid got practically eaten alive by mosquitoes. Um, 13 are the broken fishing poles and 14 are the set of clothes because um, everybody has clothes on already. So the, the best thing that clothes can do is be um, ripped up to be used for, 
for other things or, or maybe extra layering. Um, but I expect even with them rank ordered that I'm going to find a way to take everything. <laughs> so, all right, Tisha, you're up. So I haven't heard what you guys said, except the last part of what Connie said. But um, so my ranking was based on first water and then warmth, then food and oh, sorry, then direction, because I figure you don't need food as much as you do as getting out because no one's coming for you and then food and then whatever else. So one is the yellow frisbee, because if it rains that much, there's free water. Um, two, the water purification tablets and three, the whiskey, because it's a container to hold the water. And if someone gets hurt, I, I believe, I read this a few days ago, didn't somebody get hurt and maybe you can dump the whiskey on to clean out a wound or something. Um, four is the sleeping bags for the warmth. Um, five is the matches. Although I don't know how much good they'll be if it's raining that much. Um, you probably won't have anything dry enough to even start a fire. Where is six? Six is the compass because for navigation, for the same reasons that I just heard Connie saying. And then seven, the map of the region. Eight, the flotation devices. And nine, the rope to uh, maybe bind together um, to get across water. Um, 10 is the fanny pack of food. 11, the fishing poles, although fish aren't much good if you can't start a fire because everything's wet. <laughs> 12 is the duct tape, although duct tape is probably man's best friend. I couldn't think of any specific reason to take it right now. Um, 13, the insect repellent. I mean, bug bites suck, but water is more important. And then 14, the clothes. All right. Um, so now, now what we need to do is, is get a consensus on um no, nobody was exactly the same i i didn't write down what everybody said but um uh, i know a lot of people had matches first um but it but we have to figure out a consensus and so i think how to do that is to figure out our game plan and then we can decide what supplies we need I think we all kind of had similar mindsets in that, I mean, water is usually at the top of people's list, um, and then heat and direction. Um, so, I mean, I guess we can, I mean, all three of those were up there, so I don't know. We can go by category first and then kind of go from there, you know? What do you, what do you think the game sh plan should be? We've got... Um, I believe there's five of us. We've got a guy with a broken leg and, um, do we, do we try and take him out with us or are we going to try and make it the 60 miles to the city or are we trying to make it the 15 miles to the road? Are we trying to repair the canoes and, and, um, get on going? I think it just depends on who's hurt. Because if John's hurt, he picked whiskey first. We just leave him with the bottle of whiskey and, and uh, <laughs> it <could> be good. <laughs> and the yellow frisbee so we can find him again. <laughs> right. I, I think probably the best thing to do, as counterintuitive as it seems, is to sit tight and wait out the five days. Um, every, like, training I've ever been through, every, like... So I'm a Washington State Hunters Ed instructor, and we cover this a lot with our hunters, is that as soon as you're in trouble like this, the best thing to do is just stop. And, and we teach an acronym for that. And the best thing to do is just get in place, especially where we've got somebody with a broken leg. Like we could send out a two-person scouting party to try to do that 15 miles to that road. But now we've just split the group up, and if they get hurt or stuck, then we've got more people we've got to find. Um, so I think probably the best thing to do would just be to hunker down and prepare for five days of suck in the wilderness. Yeah, I, I agree with that because if we send other people away, they'd have to take some supplies. And so that kind of takes away from, um, both parties there. So either everyone goes or everyone stays and we figure out a plan from there. 
And then who would get the whiskey? That'd be the top thing. <laughs> So I would have thought the opposite, like we try because help is so far away and it's going to be so many days before anyone even realizes we're gone. So why, like, what is the reasoning behind staying there? I mean, obviously you don't want anyone to get more hurt, but when you have that big a difference in time, it's not like someone's going to start looking for us in 36 hours. It's going to be most of a week. That's a super, super good question. So the couple of things that for this scenario like make me think that sitting is better is first the majority of the area is wet and so it's covered in in water and it's covered in lakes and so that's going to pose an obstacle um our canoes are pretty much trashed like we don't have anything there that's going to fix them duct tape won't hold up as soon as they get wet um that duct tape is going to start peeling off and then we're going to have leaks in those and so then we have a repeat problem of this same situation we're in now um and so I've got a buddy, He's in, he was in the infantry and the military, and then before that he guided for years, and, and we've grown up in Washington, and he goes, he goes, if you have matches, he goes, it doesn't matter how wet it is, you can make a fire. He goes, there's always something you can find that will burn. He says, and that is the most important thing you do. And so if we could set up a camp and make things as comfortable as we possibly can for those five days, then we've got a better odds of survival because if, if we are venturing out every day, trying to rebuild a fire every day, getting re-cold, re-wet, um you know everything like that every single day eventually we're just our bodies are just going to stop versus if we just kind of shut down and go into basic survival mode we're not burning as many calories we're not trekking through stuff we're not you know burning the expenditure yeah obviously it'll suck like there i'm not there's no doubt about that but um every basic survival thing i've ever learned is that you just sit put and you just wait and you just gotta wait and wait and wait and hopefully we'll get the frisbee so we can play catch we can watch John try to do flips as he's drinking whiskey. And, but I don't know. That's just the logic. You know, like all the survival training I've ever I've ever had says to wait. And in this situation particularly, because of the water, and because we get down to 25 degrees regularly, that just screams don't be out, you know, messing around and stuff. Just hunker down and get warm and dry and then do your best to preserve that. Okay. See, I had thought the opposite, like, because no one's coming, you need to get yourself out. Um, but that would kind of, if we're going to go with that, then that changes my game plan. Then it becomes all about the water and the warmth, but also ways to indicate where you're at. Like, is there any way to make a signal with a yellow Frisbee high in a tree or something? So, anyway. Yeah, and I think we have a limited limited amount of food too, and so the more we're trying to walk, we're going to be burning calories, and that's that can um, lead to you just going downhill really quickly. And that's a good point. I haven't quite considered that. And it also says it's a uh, uh, provin provincial park, so I mean, it's not just like I guess random wilderness. So um, I guess I could see the the logic and staying put um, because I'm sure with that, those weather conditions and things like that, they're probably going to have people um, that they're going to have some kind of safety rangers looking for people or, or um, I don't know they can kind of suspect that dan it's dangerous conditions. So I could see the logic and staying put, but like, like Tisha was saying, that would kind of change my game plan. Well, I've been um, young women's camp director the last five years. Um, and before that, 19 years before that, so I'm going like on my silver anniversary of camp director. And um, um, we have a guy in our ward who's in search and rescue. And, and I have him speak every, every time I put a camp together. And he said that um, the the thing to do if you get lost is to sit down and wait um that everybody when they're lost they go in a quarter mile circle it's it's just um what humans do what their their body does so so they find what the search and rescue does is they find the last trace of um of evidence of the person and then they start a quarter mile circle search area and they generally will find the people because for some reason um we if we start out in a straight line we 
we always turn in a quarter mile arc. And you wanna know, you wanna know why that is? Yeah. Your gait, um, you have one foot that's bigger than the other and then you have typically one of your legs is slightly longer than the other. And so you always turn into the direction of the shorter one because it throws off your step. So even though in your mind you're doing a straight line 100%, the physics and the actual reality. So that's why it happens that way. And over that distance, as we know from Uchtdorf's talk of, you know, one minute or one degree minute, it will completely throw off the whole thing. Same thing. The more distance you cover, the more you, sh you veer to the, whatever side your body has that on. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So I guess if we're staying put, I think the thing that we probably do is light the fire first, right? I mean, we're all wet and cold. We'd probably start with the fire to warm up and um, so that we don't get hyperthermia set in. All right. Does that mean that our first criteria for what we need would be the warmth? Anything that would contribute to the warmth is most important? Well, not anything, but yeah, we'd want to have the majority of those things up higher. There's a couple of things that we want to like push. You know what I mean? We, we should have like our top five. And then from there we can like have duplicates and stuff that in my opinion. So like what? The clothes? Oh yeah. The clothes like that's, that's down. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. Like my ideal top five, and I'm not saying this for the group, my ideal top five would be matches, water purification, the parachute cord, um, the compass and the map. Yeah, the parachute cord. Oh, go ahead. No, go, go. I think the parachute cord is really important to start really early because you want to get a shelter early so that you're not exhausted and not able to build a shelter later. And I think it's important to remember that the, the whiskey can be fuel for a fire and be water pur purification. So it can be used for both and for disinfecting wounds. Um, so it's like super flammable. So it might be one of those things that would start in the rain. I mean, I'm not sure I've never tried it, but I just know it's, it's very combustible. Oh, and it says, it says it's great to help start a fire when you, when your combustible is damp. Oh, so, I mean, if it's damp conditions, hopefully it works. Right. So, Parker, why would we want the map and compass if we're going to stay put? That's what I was going to ask. Um, I, like, I don't know. I'm just one of those guys, like, I just like to know where I'm at. Um, and as soon as we can figure out where we're at, because, like, for instance, if we're sitting there and we're looking at the map and compass, all of a sudden we figure out, oh, we're only three miles from the road. Well, like, screw it. I'm going to do the three miles. because That's pretty easy to do in a short amount of time. Um, but furthermore, it lets us know what's around. So like if we see something on there that, you know, like, okay, like there's a ranger outpost here or there's a creek over here that would be better or hey, there's caves over here. It just kind of lets us know where we're at. Um, in all honesty, though, when we're planning on staying put, it's not so crucial. I think it's just like a little bit of my OCD. Like I never go hunting without a map and GPS. So it's probably just that. Like I said, in this kind of situation, you're right. It doesn't. It just. I think it's just my OCD. Okay. Um. So I think that I think the sleeping bag should be in the top five because we can use them with the cord to make a tent or just to um to hunker down in. Um. I, I definitely think the sleeping bag should be in there for personal warmth, but I'm wondering about using those for personal warmth and using the wet clothes or the personal flotation devices to make a shelter. I think we should cut the canoes up and use those as the framework of it and save the flotation devices for a signal because they're probably orange or yellow. Okay. So we can lay them out in like a, a pattern that's only man-made. You know, like where rescue can be like, oh, that's just casually there. And then the sleeping bags, yeah, I think if we could get them in the shelter um, to use as warmth, so that way, you know, in case something happens to the fire. I think that they, if we use them as the framework, um, most synthetic sleeping bags have a, a waterproof limit. They're, they're not always waterproof. So I think that they would start dripping on us and then make things too heavy. So we'd want to make the – the shelter out of like the canoes and branches and whatnot, like pine boughs. If, okay. 
that's a, a tree, but I like getting him in there because for warmth, and especially with our person with a broken leg, he's going to be experiencing shock. And so one way to combat shock is getting him warm. Okay, I've written down that the top, the top four are water. So that must be water purification and cord and whiskey and sleeping bags and then matches. Does that sound right to everyone? I got it. I've got, I don't buy the whiskey thing. I'm having a hard time. Can you guys just explain? I, I don't know how it would purify water without contaminating the water. You're like, how do you combine the two? I'm, well, it would still, it would still um, be great as a fire starter. Yeah. Yeah. If it's wet, it'll, you can catch anything on fire with it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Cause I saw, I saw a thing that said like over 80 proof. It's, it's easily lightable and any, the higher the proof, the better. And this is 180 proof. So it should go up like a Roman candle. Okay. Yeah, I'm down. Good. I'm down then. I, I just wanted to make sure I understood. Yeah, I just looked it up online because I mean, because I was looking at the different uses of it, and it just says that um, if whiskey is mixed with water, it kills harmful bacteria. Hence, you can always use it to disinfect water procured from dubious sources. Okay, so maybe they're just assuming that since it'd be so watered down, it wouldn't. Fun. Okay, yeah, because yeah, I'm like, I'm like, that's gonna be yeah, if you're consuming alcohol. Like, it does not. I guess it could be used as a painkiller. <laughs> yeah. If the person's hurt that badly. <laughs> okay, I'm for it. I, I don't understand how purified water. All right. So do we want to rank order these five, or do we want to choose the next five? Let's rank them. All right. Uh, matches first? Yeah. Sure. Water purification second. Yeah. All right. What do you want third? We've got cord, whiskey, sleeping bags. Probably the cord. Yeah, I would say cord. Okay. Sleeping bags then whiskey or vice versa. I think sleeping bags then whiskey just just because I think whiskey is kind of like if, if we can't start the fire with the matches already, then that's kind of what we would do. I don't know. Yeah. I could be wrong. No, I agree. All right. Let's throw out, um, I think I think the, the fastest way to do it is to choose four things that are the very lowest in priority. So what are the four things we really don't want? Clothing. Yeah. Fishing poles. Fishing poles. No, I we can use the duct tape to fix the fishing pole, right? Yeah, we want the fishing poles because that'll give us food. Well, and you probably want the duct tape to fix the canoes if you're going to use those for a shelter. Yeah. All right. So all I have is clothing right now. Uh, that frisbee. I think we've got other stuff that. Oh. That's a good container. I know. I, I cannot believe you guys thought of that. I did not. I mean, and we could always use that insect repellent bottle as a container as well. We just cut the top off, pour it out, and then rinse it really well. There's no <laughs> rinsing. No way I would drink that. that. I drink it. I totally would. I, I would. I we'll just pass it between. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably this it. big, too. Yeah. I think the frisbee should be six because that's another good water source. This is going to be raining a ton. So, I agree. We can take I don't the. I where to put the flotation devices. That's. I'm not sure. They're pillows. They're pillows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, can we all agree that the clothing is last? Yeah. yeah. 100%. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Clothing is last. Um, what if, um, maybe what insect if, repellent is near the bottom there. Me, if I we're think so put too. The, in the map should probably be towards the bottom too, because we're just sitting. I agree. So I think those are useless. 
Uh, I don't know on that. Well, so let's think about it this way. We are not planning on going anywhere. Yeah. So we yeah. actually don't have to carry anything. Yeah. So it really doesn't matter. It's still going to be sitting there with us. You're right. That's you're right. Just, yeah. And you can have it at your bunk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to sleep with them every night just to make sure they're there. Yeah. <laughs> I'll use the map as a blanket. <laughs> Well, plastic um, covered, it'd probably make a really good hat. Hey! <laughs> oh, yeah. And actually, you can use sticks and stuff, but you might need that to, like, use as part of a cast of some sort. Hey, we could fold that up into a cup. Yes! Duct tape! Water container. Yes! <laughs> covered. Oh, all the stuff my kids have made out of duct tape? That was really popular. Um, we, we really do have the world at our fingertips with the duct tape. It's 30 feet of duct tape. You could make everybody their own individual cup. <laughs> oh, yeah, we could make a couple cups. Yeah. I want to share. <laughs> I don't mind germs. That's <laughs> why we have the whiskey. Put <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Clean, cleans it. <laughs> All right. So, so this is what I have down for the set here is... Frisbee, duct tape, food, the flotation devices, and the fishing pole. How do we want to rank order those? So we got clothes last. And then the last is clothing, repellent, compass, and math. map. Yeah, I like that. Okay, um, so we have, Penny, what did you say we have in the middle? So our, our middle tier is the yellow Frisbee, the duct tape, the fanny pack of food, the flotation devices and the broken fishing poles. Which I would do, I think, in that order, but you read them off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So number six, frisbee. Yeah. Number uh, number seven, duct tape. Eight. What little food we have? Nine is the flotation devices. And 10 is the fishing pole. The only one I'm not sure of is if the flotation devices should be that high up. Because we, if we're staying put, we're not really using them. We can use them to signal, though. Signal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I forgot. Okay. Makes sense. You can put a, you can put them in the last of that grouping if you want. I'd be okay with that. Yeah. So switch 9 and 10? Fishing poles ahead of flotation devices. Yeah, because fishing yeah. poles is food. We could set some traps or something. Yeah. You bear grill. Yeah. That's <laughs> why so you don't need water. You just have to pee. That's what he does, That's right? <laughs> There's no I'll way. Watch this show. <laughs> I would drink the whiskey first. <laughs> well, we all would. That's just. That's no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the last rank ordering is clothing, repellent, compass, and map. I want to put repellent um, number 11. Yes. yes. Yeah. Can we at least put the compass and map above repellent and food or clothing? <laughs> no, not above food. Not yes. above food. Not above food. <laughs> I think the map, in a way, could, could still be beneficial just because. We could burn just in it. Case, like. <laughs> Hey, well, there might hey, be like landmark, landmark areas like places that like people would maybe look. I guess, like I don't know, near us, where maybe it's not super far. Where we could prob probably, if we had to, walk to a certain landmark. I guess, I don't know. I can agree with that because it says it's one bottle of insect repellent. That is not going to last for five days for one person, let alone six people. And I'm using it all anyways. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sharing that. <laughs> well, do you think the insect repellent is flammable? That yeah. you can use that no. to burn too? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Scout camp. That's the one thing I learned from it. <laughs> All the things that are flammable. <laughs> Everything's flammable is scary. <laughs> All right, so map is eleven, clothing's fourteen, and then is it 
Repellent compass, compass repellent. Compass repellent. Yeah. yeah. All right. The, compass, the map isn't worth much without the compass. Nope. All right, I'm gonna go through the numbers again so you can write them on your sheet and then we can do some math. Um, if we go in order here, the fanny pack is number eight. The map is 11. The flotation devices are 10. Broken fishing poles are nine. The clothing is 14. Frisbee is six. The water purification is two. Duct tape is seven. Whiskey is five. Insect repellent is 13. Matches number one. Parachute cord is three. Compass is 12. And the sleeping bags are four. Ooh, that's a lot different than what I wrote. Okay. Is this gonna come take this from us? This is all we get? Like, because we have all this, right? Like, why are we picking what's... All like of you said, I'll make sure I keep all of it with me. But <laughs> yeah. Like, if some, guy, if some guy's coming to take it, I'm going to set up a trap and beat him with a stick. <laughs> <laughs> so now now um, I'm going to read what the expert said. Oh, Did anybody go ahead, like, sneak ahead and read it? Mm -hmm. Okay. I read the first line, and then I thought, oh, I, I can't read anymore. It's going to really change. interesting to see what it says. All right. Once the group has completed their rankings, provide the following correct answers to be put in column D of the table. The correct answers are based on the opinions of two experts, Jeff Stemmerman and Ken Gieske of REI Outfitters, both of whom act as guides for canoe trips to the Boundary Waters region. Okay. The experts agreed that the best course of action for the group was to, re to repair one of the canoes and send two of the most experienced and least injured people to paddle to a road and go to Grand Marias for help. Because a search party would not even leave for at least five days and might not find the group for a couple of days more, this would cause severe hardship on the group, particularly the one with the broken leg. Food is way down and there is minimum protection from rain and cold since the tent and tarps were lost. Cold and rainy weather at this time of year is life-threatening, so the group must get help as soon as possible. It is estimated the group of two would move faster if everyone went along and they could get help within one day. I, I think they um, they missed a word because <laughs> it does say it is estimated the group of two would move faster. Oh, than if everyone went along. Sorry, that's the word I missed. And they could get help within one day. Then a helicopter could be sent to the campsite. First priority of the group then is to go for help. However, in order to do this and survive, it is important to get warm and try to dry out wet clothing and sleeping bags. However, since it has started to drizzle and may rain, there is no assurance things will get dry soon. In that case, the party of two needs to leave quickly in wet clothes and take their wet sleeping bags with them. There is almost no food left, most of it having been lost in the rapids. About half should go to the two paddlers who will have less time to gather food, but who will presumably get to a food source sooner. The experts said as long as they have water, they could go for three days without food and still function adequately. On the third day, they would get shaky. Those left behind can try to catch some fish to eat. Based on these opinions, the experts' rankings are the following. Number one, duct tape. This is the most essential thing because it is the only way to repair the canoe. It can be used to patch up the 18 inch tear and to fix the broken gun walls, gun wells. Other uses for the tape, which the experts say is essential on any such trip, is to repair the fishing poles and to use with large sticks to set a temporary split splint for the broken bone. Lastly, it can be used to fashion a makeshift pan to boil water. However, caution must be used to keep the tape far enough away from the flame and to not allow the water to get so hot that the, the adhesive will melt. Two, PDFs, personal flotation devices. 
These are useful mostly because they help keep the body warm. They can be worn as vests to keep the torso warm or used as sit pads or pillows on wet or cold ground. Right now, the clothes are all wet. Even when PDFs are wet, they still provide warmth. Three, map of the area. Essential for the two people striking out to get help. It would be almost impossible to navigate out of lakes and to a road without the map. The plastic coating also makes the map usable as a makeshift umbrella. Four, sleeping bags. Important to keep warm both for paddlers as well as those staying behind. Even though the bags are wet, they still provide some warmth since they are synthetic. It is important to dry them out as soon as possible though. The bags can be used day or night for warmth. Five, matches. To start a fire as soon as the drizzle or rain stops and begin drying out the clothes. The extra set can be dried out and put on at the same time that some people strip down and get into the sleeping bags while their clothes dry. Fires can be started from the plentiful wood pieces in the area. Birch bark is used as a fire as fire starter. The fire is important for cooking purposes also, as well as providing warmth for the group. If the weather had not started to drizzle and look like it was going to rain soon, then matches would have been number three in order to get the clothes and sleeping bags dry, especially for those leaving. Six, food. Though there isn't much, it is it will still be very helpful. It must be divided and rationed so that it doesn't run out quickly. For those staying behind, it is hoped that within a day, fish can be caught. However, in the meantime, the food that remains should somehow be protected from bears. Seven, clothes. When it stops raining, the extra clothes need to be dried out and three of the remaining people can wear them. This greatly helps chances of survival for keeping dry increases warmth. Dry clothes are even more important than securing additional food to eat. Eight, fishing poles. Once the duct tape is used, the poles should be fit for fishing in the lake where northern walleye and lake trout, averaging two to five pounds, fish can be caught and cooked over the fire. A stick may be used as a spit to roast the fish or the makeshift pan from duct tape can boil the fish. Nine. Parachute cord. This has many uses as a line to dry clothes, though bushes can be used too, to secure the food in a tree away from bears. Also, if the duct tape runs out, the cord can be used for splinting the leg and for repairing the gunwales on the canoe. In order to do this, poke holes near either side of the top, use the jackknife, pull the cord through the holes and tie it securely. The holes in the canoe, got it. 10, insect repellent. For protection from mosquitoes and black flies, which are both persistent and thick, as well as wood ticks and deer ticks, which often spread Lyme disease. 11, water purification tablets. Mildly important because the water in these areas is often not pure. However, the disease to worry about the most is Gidaria. Gir... Gyardia? Gyardia. I've never been able to say it, but I recognize it. A protozo protozoa in the water. It takes two weeks to take effect in the body. By that time, everyone should be home. Water can also be boiled. 12, yellow frisbee. Though brought for recreation, it actually has some survival value. One use is to boil water in it, being careful that the heat does not melt the plastic. Fish can be boiled in it as well as can hard candies and water to provide a warm liquid for the group. The frisbee can be used to fan the fire, though blowing on it works too, and can be used for recreation to ease the tension. 13, magnetic compass. This is not as important as the other items because the paddlers are well equipped to navigate the lakes with the map. 14, whiskey. Some may think this is useful for energy or to keep warm, but actually it has the opposite effect and it should only be used as a last resort for pain of the broken leg because alcohol causes dehydration and hypothermia of getting colder. After drinking alcohol, the blood capillaries expand and initially the drinker feels warm. However, heat is actually being lost and later there is a sudden feeling of being very, very cold. Now that columns B, C, and D have all been completed, instruct students to do the computations in columns A, E, and F. Emphasize that these calculations involve absolute differences 
There should not be any negative signs in the table. So if you weren't watching or writing down, duct tape is number one. The PDFs are number two. And the map is three. Map, map, map. There it is on the top. Number four is the sleeping bags. Five is the matches. Six is the food. Seven is the clothes. Eight is the fishing poles. Nine is the parachute cord. Ten is the insect repellent. Eleven is the water tablets. Twelve is the yellow frisbee. Thirteen is the compass. Fourteen is the whiskey. Before I do my math, what did you guys think about their what they said? Did you agree? What a bunch of retards. Like that was <laughs> that was terrible. Are you gonna take off into the middle of nowhere without a compass? Like I don't know, that logic did not make any sense to me. <laughs> yeah, using the map as an umbrella. Yeah, and then have you ever tried to repair a canoe with duct tape? It I've I've never had luck. <laughs> And yeah. I don't know, I it also different. said all the both canoes were bent in half. One has a tear, but they're also bent in half. Yeah, it's like some of their logic on this stuff was. I was like, this does not make any sense. <laughs> and then to go off in the cold, it's going to be twenty-five degrees and raining. Like you can get hypothermia, and then your body just tenses up, and you can't do it. And I think because we chose to put it and they chose to like partially go out, I think that changed everything. So like that's why they had the map so high, we had it so low. So it's like difference of strategy kind of completely changes everything. Yeah, that definitely changed it mid time. Yeah, when I opened that I, I read that the group was going to split. And as soon as I read that line, I put it away so I wouldn't be any more prejudiced. And without a compass, how are they going to know where they left these people? Like, is, it, is the map yeah. a GPS magic folding thing? It's like, you don't know where you left them. Well, and they don't know exactly where they're going. Yes, it looks like you're going somewhere on a map, but you didn't know where you started from. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, how do you know where you're going if you don't know where you came from? Like, I've been in the woods, and we'll go walk out for like an hour, you know, hour and a half, and then we turn around, and we're like, dude, this looks completely different than anything we just walked. It's so easy to turn around, so to not have any kind of – I mean, you can look on a map all day, but we've had it where we've navigated off of a GPS and ended up three miles off of our starting point. I don't, I don't understand the logic on this. Well, and I think we had a couple of good arguments for the whiskey that they, we weren't just going to drink it. We were going to do other stuff with it. I don't know. I think <laughs> I was just going to give up all hope and just sit on the shore. and. Yeah, at this point. <laughs> just enjoy my final moments and realize that duct tape could have saved my life and I just didn't <laughs> pay attention. <laughs> And then they're going to bear bag stuff, and there's no bears in the area. It said that. It's like, what are you worried about bear bagging for? Okay, now what are we doing with the math thing? What are we You have this sheet? Uh-huh. So, so um, column, column A, you subtract column B from column D. And column E, you subtract C from D, and F, you subtract B from C. And then I think I'm going to need all your numbers to make so the, um, you, But it said only absolute values. So if, it's, if I have 1 in the first column and 12 in the next, I just put 11. I don't put negative 11. Okay. Yeah. Let, yeah. Me, 
Is it is it the difference between or? Yeah. yeah, but if it's like a negative number, then you just write it down as an absolute value, so just a positive number. Mm -hmm. That's that's kind of strange because I have a negative nine on one. Then it becomes yeah. a positive nine. Yeah, yeah. I have a lot it's of just the numbers. difference. Yeah, that's the whole goal. Is like how far off from the expert were you? Doesn't matter which direction. It's just that that difference. Okay. But for the group score, I got 70. Let me know what you guys get. I got 70. So group, group error, is that what we're reporting? That's the 70? Yeah, that's the 70. I got 72. Well, not 72, 70 as well. <laughs> <laughs> I can <just> see. Okay, group four, all the numbers in column E. Oh, that's just the 70. And pursue, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, and then I, I know I have to do a report um, on the discussion board and um, we may have just that 70 may be enough. Um, We've got to get a couple of other things real quick. We've got to do the average member score. Okay. We need everybody's individual score divided by the five of us. Who wants to do the math? I can. What, um, uh, what, what was your individual score? Mine is 70. What was it? Seven six seventy six. Seventy six. Okay. Mine was sixty four. Um, uh, Zach or John, what was yours? Uh, fifty four. Fifty four. Uh, Tisha. Seventy five. Five. And Zach. I was seventy, so I was no better with you guys than without you guys. It's just about the same. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll. <laughs> Um, Did we try and put Ben's score in? Oh, I can't. I can't. I didn't do any of his math, though. No, because then we have to do all of his math. <laughs> yeah, we'll just do us five. Yeah. <laughs> He's, it, he totally gets I mean, he did. He couldn't. Have done that. Um, average member score is 67.8. So now what we're supposed to do. Thanks, guys, for bringing my score down. <laughs> Thank, thanks, guys. Uh, okay. Make no. Also note the best member score or lowest individual score. So who had the lowest individual score? I think it was this is John. John at fifty-four. Okay, John. What was your persuasion score? Uh, fifty. Okay. If your group score was lower than the average member score, what? 
decide if you had if your group had process gain if your group score was lower than the average member score then you had did have process gain if it was higher than you did not so our group score was 70 <laughs> we did not and what are we comparing that to to our average group score okay the the 68 average member score yeah it was 67.8 and what do we do with the persuasion score? I have no idea. It wanted us. It says ask the group member with the best member score for their persuasion score. This is called the member's persuasion score. Oh, okay. What did everyone score for persuasion? Uh, all we care about is John's because he had the best. John, what was your persuasion? No, score? we care about mine because it's good. Is it? Well, it's twenty-eight. Is is this like golf where it should be low? Or is it actually bad? I don't know. I got 36. <laughs> I got 61. It's good and bad. I got 50. I have no idea what it means then. <laughs> well, it means how much we're able to sway the others to our opinion, but I don't know. So whoever had the lowest, I guess, is the best swayer. I had 28, just saying. <laughs> so so you, you had the highest um, survival score, but the lowest persuasion score. You're so you killed us all. Die. <laughs> <laughs> and then it looks like we have to report those answers. Connie, you do yeah. for 8 to 11. You put that on the board. I will do that. I have all the numbers now. All right. Thanks, guys. Stay dry, stay warm, stay well fed. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go try this and see if I survive. And I think there's no, no meeting next week, right? Because it's 4th of July is off now? Yeah. Well, you know what? There was no group meeting for week 11 anyway. Okay. So, so it looks like a really generous email, but it really had no effect. Oh, <laughs> man. I wanted to feel like I got something. <laughs> All right, guys. All right. Have a good week. Well, thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.